Hi, I'm Alderman Deborah Silverstein, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football! Forget about Monday Night Football! There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug! Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. I am here with political analyst, political expert, interviewer extraordinaire, and the host of the North Tom News Magazine TV show, Avi Myers, as well as the proprietor of Jewish Chicago Magazine uh, newspaper. And uh, Avi, we are about to have in Chicago a uh, historical um, election something that's never happened and that is a runoff for the mayor of Chicago between um, Chewy Garcia and Rahm Emanuel who's the incumbent mayor of course of Chicago and I just think that uh, I wanted to sit down with you for a few minutes and talk uh, what do you think is going on in Chicago politics that uh, Emanuel didn't run away with it like he did the first time he was elected um, that we're going to have a runoff now. What changed in Chicago? What changed with Emmanuel? Do you think it was um, uh, Karen Lewis uh, uh, and her brain cancer and her inability to run, who was the real uh, candidate of choice probably to run against Rahm Emanuel? Uh, do you think that's why? What, what do you think is going on? Rahm Emanuel is an extraordinarily competent individual but being competent and getting accomplished what he wants doesn't necessarily mean what's going to get accomplished is good for the city of Chicago or good for the people. Don't you feel that when he was, for example, in um, President Obama's cabinet, that he was very, very popular in that position and, and coming to Chicago and becoming mayor? Well, he mayor? was chief of staff. I don't know if that's technically a cabinet job. It might oh, be. All right, whatever. Well, I think it is. Actually, it's more, staff, it's more important than the cabinet slots. It, it is. Mm -hmm. But being chief of staff, don't you feel that he was very, very popular on a national basis? And when he came to Chicago and uh, came home, I should say, to Chicago and decided to run for mayor, don't you think that that popularity uh, ran over into his... Uh, you know, landslide win to be mayor of Chicago to begin with back in uh, 2011? Well, the fact is he's, he's got a lot of accomplishments and achievements, and if he hadn't gone for chief of staff, he might have been on a career path to be Speaker of the House because he is that competent and he is that capable. But the problem is, is what does he stand for? What is he pushing? And is the guy really doing things for the benefit of you know, the people, or is he doing things, you know, for the benefit of supporters or to get power? Um, he pissed off people right away. I mean, you know, nobody, I still have yet to hear that somebody actually likes the guy. Even his commercials are contrived. But the fact is, commercials mean a lot. Um, I was very disappointed that he got as many votes as he could, as he did the first time around. I did not support him. Um, I like both Gary Chico and Miguel Duvalier much better than Rahm Emanuel. I, I don't give Rahm Emanuel, from a Jewish standpoint, any Jewish credibility whatsoever. Uh, number one, he's Bernie Tiras reminded me of Bernie Stone's funeral, as a matter of fact, and I'm glad he did. That Rahm Emanuel stated plainly that while he is a Jewish mayor. He is a man, he's not a Jewish mayor, he's a mayor who happens to be Jewish. So he's kind of casting aside his Judaism in the first place. And from that standpoint too, he, um, you know, from a Jewish standpoint, he started his campaign on Shabbos. He did certain important things in his campaign on Sukkot during the holiday days. And not to mention the fact that from, from a United States-Israel standpoint, even though he volunteered to help Israel during the, the campaign in 91, the fact is that um, he was, from Clinton's standpoint, the main supporter and author of the United States side of the Oslo Accord. Mm -hmm. And the Oslo Accord has caused you know, Jewish people a lot of headaches and problems. The people in Israel, it's almost been crippling to. He was brought here to do a job, and he was the, the right guy in some ways to do it. He is tougher than nails. Um, his purpose 
based on the money that, that came his way, was to take down the unions in Chicago, accomplish pension reform, okay, haul down the budget, because Rahm Emanuel himself isn't really that, he's never historically been that far to the left. As a matter of fact, when it comes to 2008, Hillary Clinton versus Barack Obama, he was the last stalwart to stay with Hillary, no matter what. I'll give him credit for loyalty, but he would not go to Obama until the Clintons released him. He's that loyal to the Clintons. That's actually a good political trait, and one of the few nice things I can say about the guy. But the fact is, when he came out, head up against the Union, Karen Lewis clobbered him. And, by, and his telling Karen Lewis to go herself mm -hmm. um, didn't help either and put an image in a lot of people's minds. So let me go, let me go to another, another side of things, because we haven't talked about Chewy yet. But, but crime, double digits down, murders, double digits down in the city of Chicago since Rahm Emanuel. He instituted things like, um, instead of pulling police from one district and putting them in another, giving them overtime so they could volunteer to work in other districts when they were needed rather than taking them away from one district. There were certain things that he has done which were innovative in Chicago and, and, and obviously with crime down that's a big that's a big thing that people look at when they're thinking of a mayor and who to vote for, you know, safety and crime are always a big issue. Obviously we read in the we read in the papers every day of murders and, and shootings in Chicago. And you know he says gun control is the problem. No matter how many police you have on the streets, people have guns and gun control isn't there because of federal laws. Um, but don't you think that these things are things that are accomplishments that possibly uh, are the reasons that right now the polls are looking in his favor? Well, I think people think, Ron is telling people those are accomplishments. Ron has very little to do with any of that, almost nothing. First of all, what he's done with the police department is a crime. He claimed he was going to hire a thousand new officers. He's hired one that I know of. Um, that hasn't happened. Crime was going down year after year anyway. And the crime has been going down for a number of reasons, including people just leaving Chicago. Okay, Their Crime is different than it used to be. You don't really worry about having your house broken into anymore in most neighborhoods. Uh, although getting your iPhone stolen or your portable whatever device. Uh, snatch and grabs, that'll happen. Uh, I don't think anything he did had anything to do with anything positive that happened in the police department. The police department, first of all, I doubt, speaking as a cap speed facilitator for the last 19 years, and a member of the district advisory committee of the 24th district for longer than that, um, I think he has been harmful to the police efforts. Bringing in an outsider like Gary McCarthy was a big mistake. Morale on the police department is absolutely awful. People are not happy with the way things are. People under Rahm Emanuel are not allowed to speak their mind at all. These guys have to shut up. People, I used to get people on my show right and left from the city. It started under Daly the last few years, where people were told they can't, make, they can't come on shows, uh, they can't be interviewed by newspapers, they only want the real high ups doing these things. Rahm's shifting of officers accomplished nothing whatsoever. He claims all this community policing stuff. He has no idea what community policing is. Um, like I said, Gary McCarthy has not been popular. He shifted a lot of people. There are a lot of good people in the Chicago Police Department. These people try to do good jobs in the first place. But a lot of officers are very afraid because the rules keep changing. And, and morale is bad. It just is. And Rahm Emanuel and Gary McCarthy have a lot to do with that. All right. Let's look at, at, at Chewy Garcia. He oh, is good. Now we get to rip him now. A cook. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's Avi. You know, he's, he's a, a Cook County uh, Commissioner for the 7th District uh, he, since 2011. Um, he was on the Illinois Senate uh, for six years. Um, he's uh, been on the City Council back uh, 86 to 93, he's a longtime politician, yet, I, I, you know, I wonder, does he have the leadership ability, and I'm not saying he doesn't, but I'm wondering, and that's why I'm having you on the show yeah. to, to analyze this, I, I wonder if he has the leadership ability that Rahm Emanuel does. Rahm Emanuel does command leadership, 
and, and does a good job of it. And when he speaks, he speaks very smoothly, very clearly, and uh, gets across his point. He's not afraid to say what he thinks. Do, do you feel that, that people will have the respect and the loyalty to, to Garcia that they have for Emmanuel? How, how do you think that's going to go? And, and do you think he's capable uh, of being the mayor of Chicago? Okay, now number one, I, don't, I think you're, you're painting Ram too nice. No, Chewy Garcia isn't half the man that Emmanuel is. But that's not necessarily good or bad thing. The fact is Emmanuel is a force of nature, but I don't think he speaks his mind. I think he speaks the way, the direction that he wants things to go in. He does understand how things work better. So, I mean, but, but Chewy has never had to be an administrator. He's never had to run anything. Being a legislature, legislator, which you are on the county board or the state senate or the alderman's office, um, it's not the same as running things. Well, I want, I want to tell you that, um, and you know this and our viewers, that uh, Ram is the choice of our local politicians here in, in the neighborhood, um, uh, Jewishly and, and politically, um, and uh, they... Um, were with me just this week when Rahm Emanuel came to speak leaders to leaders in the West Rogers Park Jewish community, on the West Rogers Park community, and uh, I have some excerpts of that I want to share with our viewers of uh, me with Rahm Emanuel and with these other leaders in the community. So stay with us for some excerpts with uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel in West Rogers Park here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Avi and I will be back. Four years ago, I just want to lay a little setting. I, I made one basic premise to the voters. Our challenges were up here, and our sense of our potential to meet those challenges were down here. We had self-doubt. And I said, if the most important thing is if we actually start tackling our challenges, it will give businesses and jobs and families the confidence to come back to the city of Chicago and grow. I'll go through everything, but fast forward. Chicago is now the number one city for corporate relocations two years in a row. Chicago is the number one city for uh, job creation of any major city in America. And Chicago is the number one city for families moving back into. A big, I'm doing the top ten cities. I'm not doing, you know, everything. I can't, I don't want to argue about Scottsdale, with, uh, Arizona versus Chicago. But of the ten, top the ten cities, that's number one. And basically, while we have taken our efforts, it is the whole premise was if you grow the economy, create jobs, it gives you a greater capacity to meet your challenges as well as seize your opportunities. Now, Deborah got elected four years ago, I got elected four years ago. Our annual structural deficit every year <coughs> was north of $600 million. In four years, we've taken it below $300 million, and each year it gets better. Without a property tax, sales gas, or gas tax, without any gimmicks, every year we put money back into the rainy day fund for, God forbid, for a crisis. And every year I've increased our investments in our children, neighborhood services, and our families, the small businesses. And we are finally growing again. And I think that is a fundamental. Now you know this. I mean, you've built synagogues. You've built businesses. It is harder to take the rock up the hill. But if you don't have leadership, that rock can fall down much quicker. Chicago, between 2001 and 2010, lost more people in population than any other city. Big city again, 200,000 people. We're now growing faster than any other city in the sense of people moving into. And I think you've got to provide leadership to give people the confidence to make a decision. And I give you one telling example. It's just an example of not the measure, but it's a indication. You know, John, the uh, so Willis Tower, Sears Tower, just got sold at a record rate, higher than anybody, any other building outside of New York City. And Blackstone doesn't let money go easily. That's a vote of confidence in what they think is going on in the city of Chicago. And remember, whoever we vote for for mayor, last election, there were four, five of us. Now there's one of us is going to merge. One will be mayor for four years. One person will be left for four years to make the decisions. Now we've done a lot of hard work, trust me, there's a lot of hard decisions coming. One of us will be left as mayor to make those decisions and lead the city. I know 
Not everything I've said you've agreed with. Wait until I get home. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's life. But I've never, ever not tried to make the right decisions for the future of the city of Chicago, both for what we have to do educationally, what we have to do fiscally, what we have to do to recruit uh, uh, jobs and uh, businesses to the city. And we're finally actually addressing our challenges and meeting our obligations and investing in the future. This is a big election. And I, you know, everybody says, oh, it's, yes, my name's on the ballot. I personally think Chicago's future is on the ballot. One of us is going to be mayor. There are 20 areas of the city, think of them as 20 blocks each. They created, there are 3% of the geography that creates 22% of all shootings, homicides, and robberies. So we saturate those areas, which is why you saw two years in a row reduction and why now our homicides are the lowest since 1965. So we beat every year for the last 50 plus years, every year. Second is, I created the $100 million overtime. If you have an officer on duty, you have an officer off duty. It's a fact. So what I did was through overtime, you have crime or violence spikes in the evening, on weekends, and the summer months. By giving the uh, superintendent the latitude to take, get the police when you need them, summer, weekends, or an evening, that gives them the ability to move the police officers when they need them uh, at the time they need them <laughs> on overtime. So nobody is taken out of, I think you're in 24 up here. Yes, mm -hmm. Nobody's taken out of 24. You have a full de deployment and we're at full capacity. The overtime is for, is you volunteer for overtime. You're not, you're not recruited or drafted. Now I want to say an overall crime strategy includes for kids in those in communities, after school, summer jobs. And fundamentally, you know, we have the same amount of stabbings New York or LA does. We have more shootings than New York or LA. You are not going to get to the level of safety we want to see without gun control. It is not a policing issue. And I will give you the data in P District 24. Your <laughs> violent crime issue is an Evanston generated issue that comes over because of the two conflicts between here and what's up in Evanston, and that's where periodic what happens. But I will give you the actual data for 24, and the years <coughs> up here have actually, over the last four years, each year have seen double digit declines, okay? But it's, you're, no police are coming out of 24 to serve three, four, five, seven, six, eight, nine, or 11, or 15, none of them. Doesn't happen. Without any fanfare, I changed the rules. We are going to universal pre-K, four-year-old education, three and four. I allowed faith-based entities to compete for the money based on quality. You have to meet the quality. The reason we were able to secure $600 million from the federal grant, the government, and New York and LA did not, is I did our own race to the top years ago. Catholic schools, you know, have 18 new schools getting money. I, it's not a voucher, so don't go there. I'm not going there. I'm telling you up front, I'm not doing it. But it relates to early childhood. We give resources, as long as you can show that the kids are getting a quality education at, at earlier years. So if you want to work together, I'm not, I have no problem on that. And so I will have as a follow-up, we can have Evelyn Diaz show if people are interested. It's in the pre-K. It's not kindergarten. It's not at, pri at private schools as it relates to first grade, second grade. I'm not taking on that battle. But I've t done a change as it relates to early childhood years in the pre-K model. So if you guys want to work on something, that is something where we can be having. Like nursery? It's done in the pre-K. That's what we do. Pre-K, three and four. With Pesach coming. With the eight precincts that can't operate within the, uh, uh, obviously, the synagogue, that it's essential that people, there's obviously vote by mail, there's early voting, there's a lot of ways to take care of this, and whether people are here or not here, given we are changing in eight precincts where they think they're going, and I need every vote. <coughs> I need every vote. I'm going to leave no stone, un a stone unturned. 
and I'll obviously talk about any of the subjects you want to talk about. Deborah and I uh, came in together, same class. Pat's been there since 1983. But I really do believe we're starting to do the things necessary. And I'll close on this. My grandfather came to the city in 1917, 100 years ago, from Moldovia, 13 years old by, his, by himself, not a word of English, a third grade education, to meet a third cousin he never knew, to a city he couldn't even pr pronounce the name. Met my grandmother, and they settled first in Lawndale. Met my grandmother at Douglas Park at a dance for people from Romania. And then eventually they moved to Albany Park. Gave my mother an education. My mother made, gave an education to three boys. This is the greatest city that the grandson of an immigrant who couldn't didn't speak a word of English within two generations, his son, his grandson, can be the mayor of the city of Chicago. <coughs> it's a different tenor. And all of us trace our roots and histories back to some other place. When I was growing up, my parents in our family room had pictures of my dad's relatives, pictures of my mother's relatives, all black and white. In the middle was a purse of my great mother, great my grandmother, and my two great aunts. That purse carried their passports, and it was a picture of their passports there. And the pictures of the relatives were all the relatives who never made it to America, never made it to Israel, to remind us that we had a responsibility to do something. I think it's a great honor to be the mayor of the city of Chicago. I think it's a great honor to serve a city made up of people of all different faiths from all different parts of the world who know that in this city, when you come here, they say, welcome home. And it's been a great city to my family. And our, my ability to serve is something I take very, very seriously. I hope I not only can count on your support, but make sure that your congregants and that your relatives and your families and your neighborhood and your community know how important this election is like other parts of the city do. It's essential that everybody participate however they vote. I obviously prefer their vote, but that's a separate subject. <laughs> so with that, I'll take any questions, folks. Wow. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to do this question, Rabbi, next, and then yours, because you can't say. Okay. Rabbi Doug, um, yeah. just wanted to know if you think that um, the budget cuts that Governor Rauner is proposing um, and your relationship with him in the past in the media, do you, f do you feel that those have hurt you? Do you think that they're going to hurt you? Do you think the they're going to hurt the, the city? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure the, what you were asking. The, Some the, people the, think the relationship hurts me. Well, no, 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 no. I'm asking about the budget cuts, obviously, yeah. for the city, but do you think that your relationship within that is, is, is something that people are, are relating you to? No. Uh, look, I've been... I, Bruce Rauner and I are friends. Mm -hmm. We're also from different parties because we totally disagree. <laughs> I would never, look, I grew up in a home where a Democrat was one of the lost tribes, so that's how I grew up, okay? <laughs> I would never agree to any of the uh, uh, things that he's talking about. I think, let me just say this, I'm rebuilding every playground in the city of Chicago. Your neighborhood's been a beneficiary of it in significant levels. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Rebuilding, I'm not talking about a paint job, new equipment, everything. That's where the fabric of a neighborhood and community comes together. That's where relations come. I think what Bruce is doing <laughs> on parks is nuts. One of the reasons we're growing so fast in the sense of jobs is because of the investments we're making in public transportation. I think his strategy is nuts. We have the second largest system in America. More people take our public transportation system, which I did today, in a single month than take all of Amtrak nationwide all year. The reason companies are coming here is because people can get to work quickly and efficiently in our city, unlike New York or L.A. <laughs> I think those are crazy. I also think he's, he's, it's not what he's doing as it relates to daycare. And I tell him that. I just talked to him today. <coughs> I think the policies. Now, I do think this. I've worked for two presidents. <coughs> I worked in Congress. I've been mayor. Having a personal relationship, even when you disagree on policy, plays. I don't think he's trying to <coughs> screw with me or me with him. I don't challenge his motives. I'll agree on certain things. I'll disagree on those certain things. The good news is I don't think you're playing a game with me and I'm playing a game with you. Because we're friends, we have a personal relationship, that adds a level of trust. And in the end of the day, when you're trying to get something done, you've got to trust the other person's motivation. On the policies, 100% uh, disagree on the things he's uh, said. And I will say this, you name me another Democrat that's spoken up like I have. 
There's other statewide elected officials that, as far as I know, have the Democratic label next to them. <coughs> I've been very clear where I disagree. And when I don't have anything to say, I don't say anything. And do I look like a person scared of speaking their mind? <laughs> I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I. 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 I am an American. I am an American. I am American. I am an American. I'm an American. I'm an American. I am 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 an American. I'm Senator Mark Girk, and you're watching Tate with me by Doug. Welcome back. Well, um, I, I think that uh, Mary Manuel spoke very, very well. The big, the big message I think we need to tell everyone is go out and vote. The voting, especially if you're here in the West Rogers Park area, is in the middle of the Passover holiday. The synagogues that normally are precincts, uh, uh, polling places, are no longer being used for this election because of the middle of Passover holiday and people bringing in food. So to prevent, that. to prevent that, all those polling places are being moved. So people may, uh, and this is something that the mayor actually brought up, may be going, whoever they're going to vote for, to their polling place, find out it's not there and just say, oh, forget it. I'm not going to go somewhere else. So the important thing now is to vote early. Go to your early voting location, and there's going to be a special early voting day on Sunday uh, this week. This Sunday, um, the polls will be open in the early uh, in the West Rogers Park area and Warren Park uh, because of the Jewish holiday and the changing of the polling places. So that's really the message is that everybody needs to make their decision, whoever they're voting for, and go out and vote. Uh, I think Mayor Emanuel spoke very well and his, his commitment seems to be sincere from, from the standpoint of being next to him and listening to him. Uh, Chewy has not reached out to this community to come out and speak oh, to no, us no, as a community. No and so uh, I can't really speak about him. I, I want to thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you. And I want to just tell people yeah, too please. that in the first three days of early voting in the 50th Ward, 695 people have voted already. Wow, that, that's incredible. Um, remember, if you want to check out our website, it's www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see former shows on the web. Uh, you North sure watch them, they're really good. Northtown <laughs> News Magazine, your website. NTNM.org. NTNM.org. And uh, Avi's on every single week. We're on every single week. And if you want to send me an email or send Avi an email, you can send it to me. I'll forward it to him. Info at tvrabbi.com. Remember, we're on every week at this time. Please go out and vote. That's the important thing, whoever you vote for. And uh, may the best man win. And uh, we will have a mayor of Chicago, either the incumbent returning or a new mayor of Chicago for the next four years. So it's important for you to make your choice and make it count. See you next time here on Take With Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. Yeah, I'm talking about Rabbi Doug. Talking about Rabbi Doug. Talking about Rabbi Doug on your TV show. Well, he's the rabbi for me. Anytime you need. You're gonna get married or you're gonna die. You're gonna see Rabbi Doug. You're gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.